Hello, everyone. Thanks for having me here. I'm Ksenia, uh, technical marketing specialist in Samsung Research Russia. Uh, as you know, this is a sponsorship talk, and uh, you may think that I will try to promote our center to you, and I think that you are right. Uh, however, I will try to do my best not to keep you bored. And before we start, I have to say that uh, the sphere of R&D has uh, lots of limitations, and the main limitation is NDA. Uh, what does it mean? It means that uh, today I have um, an opportunity to talk only about uh, technologies that exist in public domains. And the second one that I wanted to say that um, maybe one month ago, when I was preparing my speech, um, I wanted to talk to you um, about AI uh, trends worldwide, about what is going on in the world. But uh, Nadia and uh, Katerina, the main organizers here, told me that uh, you are two smart guys to think or to listen to some marketing stuff. But I'm a marketing specialist, and, and it's um, a little bit confusing. Uh, so uh, today I'll try to um, tell you something about our technologies in a simplified uh, way. So please, okay, let's start. Um, as you know, Samsung is a global company. Uh, it has lots of business divisions, and one of these business divisions is uh, Samsung Research. Um, we have uh, 14 R&D centers and seven AI centers worldwide with HQ in Korea. Here in Moscow, we have two centers, Samsung Research Russia and Samsung AI Center. So, um, Samsung Research Russia is one of the oldest centers uh, worldwide. Uh, we, uh, it was opened in 1994, and we have uh, 300 employees here. Uh, the main research directions you can find on the slide. Uh, we have an expertise in six spheres. Algorithm research with core biometric technologies, uh, media processing team, uh, applied intelligence team, uh, deep system team, these guys doing compilers. I think that this is rather complicated stuff. <laughs> Optics <laughs> uh, and business development. Uh, these guys are adapting our technologies to Samsung business. One year ago, we opened Samsung AI Center in Moscow, near Belarusko metro station. Uh, we have uh, 50 employees here. Uh, the main research direction you can find on the slide. And big boss here, uh, Dmitry Petrovich Vyatrov, is a uh, lead leader of AI Core Platform Lab. And you may ask, uh, why Samsung opened two uh, separate offices? The answer is rather simple. Uh, in Samsung Research Russia, guys are focused on um, fast commercialization projects, and in Samsung AI Center, uh, engineers do focus only on AI and only in long-term research. But uh, their achievements are really awesome. You will uh, look at it later. And now, um, let's move to our technologies, what we've done our achievements, and let's begin from Samsung Research Russia Technologies. Uh, the first one is one-shot learning. Uh, this uh, fast phase detection and recognition technology was developed by our applied intelligence team. Uh, and uh, uh, this uh, algorithm, this technology is based on machine learning classification algorithms and can uh, recognize uh, the face using only one image. Uh, because of this com uh, compactness and good, good recognition rate, it, it can be applied in different practical spheres like banking, payments, security, smart home, and so on. And we really like this technology because we use it too. Uh, we use it uh, for, uh, in our AI center for booking conference rooms. And this is how it works. Uh, this technology uh, that implemented in AI Center uh, is learned on uh, existing data set of our employees. And this, that's it. The second one is frame rate up conversion. 
Um, this is the, fir the world first software on um, software FRC on mobile device. It was developed by a media processing team. And this is how it works. On the left picture, you can see uh, slow motion technology, uh, original slow motion technology, 480 frames per second. And the right one is our super, super slow motion technology, um, 860 frames per second. And I remind you th and that this is the world first software on uh, FRC on mobile device. So how it works? Uh, by consecutive frames, n and plus one, algorithm determine which objects have moved, and then um, motion vector is constructed from the position of these moving objects. Using this vector, we can calculate where the moving objects should be at the moment of time. In other words, we want to uh, generate, uh, in um, insert new generated frame between two existing frames. And this is, uh, or, or interpolated frame. So uh, we build this interpolated frame or motion compensation interpolation. And that's it. Uh, this algorithm now is implemented in flagship models up to Samsung Galaxy S10, S10 Plus, and uh, the newest one, uh, Samsung Note 10 and N10 Plus. Okay, let's move to Samsung AI Center technologies. Uh, I remind you that this guy is doing only long-term research, but their achievements are really awesome. Uh, you can use this QR code to learn more about this technology. Uh, human pose estimation. It was developed by uh, Vision Learning and Telepresence Lab. Uh, lab leader is uh, Viktor Olimpitsky. Okay, I will show you what is it. <gasps> Excuse me. On the left, our method. Uh, on, the, on the right picture, you can see state of the art. Here you can see some mistakes. Okay, uh, basically human um, pose estimation is a problem of finding uh, the coordinates of human body in space. The solution to this problem can be applied in really many practical spheres like um, movies, games production, uh, telepresence, survival, and, and so on. And our engineers, um, and that's why our engineers focused on uh, 3D uh, a human pose estimation in 3D by multiple images. Mm. For human pose estimation, our engineers uh, used two methods. The first method is called algebraic. So we take um, C images. Ah, what, what do we have? We have C images taken at the same moment of time uh, and the coordinates of two cameras, two 3D cameras. So we take these C images and process them through a um, quite large pre-trained neural network called 2D backbones to find 2D key points. This network provides us with a J number of heat maps. J is equal to the number of joints. Then we use softmax and um, also add uh, joint confidences taken from this uh, 2D backbones. After passing a learnable triangulation, we finally uh, get 3D pose estimated. Although this method overcomes almost all classical methods, um, but it has one drawback. There is no uh, prior in human pose estimation. Uh, no prior means that uh, the model doesn't know uh, which pose we can make and which pose we can't make. And here we add the second method called volumetric. 
Uh, the beginning is quite the same. We have C images, uh, process them through uh, 2D uh, backbones, and then, then we get K number of joints, not J. And then some magic comes, uh, and we get the semantic information uh, from uh, in a compressed form, and then aggregated from all cameras uh, using a projection. Uh, our engineers trained and validated this uh, neural network on uh, human 3.6M, uh, uh, and were able to uh, surpass the state of the art about uh, five. Um, and a half times. Uh, basically, it can be applied, um, it can be used only with one camera, only with, um, use only one, not two cameras, and uh, the results are very, very close to the state of the art. And the last one technology is neural point based graphics. It's also developed by uh, Vision Learning and Telepresence Lab. I will show you how it works. Uh, this technology allows to render complex scenes from the neural, neural uh, viewpoints using uh, source point cloud uh, as proxy geometry and require no, no meshes. I, th I think that uh, the main appliance of this technology is uh, in mobile apps uh, like Airbnb, Cyan, um, Demophone, and so on. Uh, in case when you want to um, learn more information about the flat you want to rent or to buy if you have just uh, simple, uh, single images of the, uh, of the flat. <clears throat> and here are uh, two stages, training and testing. Uh, so, as I said earlier, you can scan object with an ordinary video camera, and then you produce a raw point cloud. Uh, you can do it uh, using widely available uh, software, for example, uh, edges of Metashape. Then we feed point cloud and video to the algorithm and the seed. The core ingredient of uh, this algorithm is eight dimensional descriptors. They are learned for each point in the cloud. Uh, instead of three common RGB images. So, rendering neural network interprets these descriptors and outputs RGB image. Our engineers trained the network on large scanner data set uh, to boost the generaliz generalization capabilities uh, on novel scenes. On the second stage, uh, we use this point cloud and uh, learn descriptors and, uh, that we received earlier and shift the camera trajectory and proceed it with a 3D and our neural network. And that's it. This is the example. Uh, you have seen a demo. Uh, on the left, you can see a source point cloud from the video, so what is from the simple video. On the center, there are eight learned descriptors, not three RGB uh, colors. And uh, what we have, our neural network output. So that's it, thank you very much. You can mail me if you have any questions and now I can ask any questions you want. <laughs> thank you.